Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome to the video. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Welcome to the new digs. Um, I promise there is some things on the wall, but the background that made the most sense to film this video today happens to be a plain white wall. There are a couple different background options that I'm still playing with, so bear with me. Hopefully that continues to improve, but today the lighting is perfect outside. The snow is absolutely falling down in these big, beautiful fat flakes. It's like winter is coming all at once this week. <laughs> um, it's been one of the most mild winters of my life, but today we have this beautiful, beautiful snowstorm that I've just been admiring. I'm in my new apartment. I am so, so, so happy with it. I'm so happy to finally be here and be moved in and settled in. And this is the second attempt at a video that I'm going to be filming. The first one I tried to do in front of the window and the sunset and it was just a disaster. So couldn't use that, but this is looking better and I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about sort of how the no buy is going. Some products that I've been sort of drooling over and having a hard time not purchasing and what I've been doing instead and sort of what my current makeup routine is and my feelings on my current makeup routine. So let's get into it. So what's been helping me stay really consistent in not buying any makeup this year has been not going on Sephora and seeing what's new. And I do still watch a lot of beauty YouTubers, but I don't really have a reason to watch their videos on like new makeup, playing with new makeup, or like full face of new stuff, new Sephora haul, all that type of video. I really haven't been watching and that's been helping me not be tempted by a lot of things, but there are a few things that I actually haven't seen in a lot of videos that I have my eye on and it's interesting because in my current makeup routine I'm really lacking in the foundation department I've been using concealer as foundation or I've just been using a skin tint and I don't really have a foundation that I've been enjoying for an everyday use and that kind of makes the process of putting on my base makeup like a little bit less enjoyable because it's not exactly what I'm trying to go for however there's really no foundation that's tempting me right now, and maybe I need to do a little bit more research, but I did say at the beginning of the snow buy year that if I totally ran out of something, that would be a reason to go buy another one, but here I am with no foundation, and I don't wanna buy any. So it's just interesting, just sort of taking note of what, what those things are that I have been like, ooh, I wanna buy that, that I need, I need, I want, and the things that I actually need, but don't want. I'm not sure what that says about me, but just an interesting observation. Um, I pulled up my Sephora Loves, and the few things here that really spark my makeup joy are the Merit Blush, which, which I did get for myself many, many moons ago, and I gifted it to my mom, not because I didn't love it, but because the full face that I bought for her didn't have a blush in it. And one day we were doing makeup together and I was like, oh, let me just put a little bit of this blush on you. I think it'll bring everything together. And um, it was beautiful. So I was like, you keep it. And it's been fine because one of my current cream blushes is like the same color as Beverly Hills, which is the color that I gave to her. But there's all these gorgeous new colors of the Merit cream blush. Specifically, I'm looking at this the shade Stockholm, which is this baby pink. And of course, it's out of stock. That is reason enough not to get it. These cool tone baby pinks fly off the shelves, especially in cream formulas. But I do think that this is a trend, if you will, that will not have a trendy effect on me and my complexion and my skin. I think I can wait for either the no buy year to be over or for me to be completely out of blush to pick this shade up. And even if this like baby pink moment has come to an end, I think because I have such a fair rosy complexion, it will still look good on me and look very natural on me. So that is a reason why I feel okay waiting on getting this color. I also feel like this is a color that 
It's great for winter and it's great for spring and summer. Not so much fall. Fall we get into those moodier, deeper, darker sort of sunburnt colors. Um, but I am definitely cool waiting on this either until spring and summer months when I'm out of a blush or until next year when it's the dead of winter again. And I'm ready to dive into a new year with all my notes on how the no buy went. The other color in this blush formula that is very fall and probably specifically fall is terracotta and it's not a new color but it's one of the two other than beverly hills that i was tempted by right from the start so those are in the back of my mind and in the meantime i'm enjoying the blush that i have okay sculptino by tower 28 i have watched a couple reviews of this and it looks like a beautiful product their cream blush is my favorite cream blush right now and it's what i've been using every single day in the shade magic hour and this is apparently the same exact formula or a very very similar formula and they have a really really great color broad which looks like it's going to be actually leaning more towards a bronzer but with a sculpting effect which is something that i love it's a two-in-one and that's the type of color i use every single day my current product in that world of sort of hybrid bronzer contour is patrick ta and because that's not clean i definitely have my eye on this to potentially pick up once i run out of that which will probably be this year since i hit pan months ago on a similar vein to that, Milk Makeup has released a couple new things. It's got a new shade in their cream bronzer stick, and this shade is called Dazed. I have the shade Baked, and I have always loved this formula, and I like the color, but it's a little too deep for me, especially in the winter months. And now we have a beautiful, lighter color, and it looks like, again, it's gonna be a really great color for me to use as a bronzer with a little bit of sculpting going on as well. In addition to that, they have a new product, their Cream Contour Stick, which looks like it's gonna be the same exact formula, but in contour colors. And this looks beautiful. Um, right now, I've been using Fenty Amber. Um, picked it up years ago and never really used it that much. Used it mostly for stage performance when I needed to add a ton of really sharp shadowy contour. For me, even though I'm very fair, it's very hard to keep that product from going gray. I have to use a very little amount, blend it in with my bronzer, and then it does what I need it to do. And because of that, it's been a long time of trying to get more and more use out of it, but never really scratching the surface of the product. And it's not a product that I wanna be using forever because the ingredients in it don't really give me the warm and fuzzies. However, I've been really loving the look of the Fenty Beauty stick contours, specifically Amber Suede, which looks like it's just a touch warmer than Amber and would be a really, really great tone for me. The lightest color in this Milk Makeup Bronzing Stick, sorry, contour stick, is called Toasted for light to fair skin tones and it's beautiful. It looks exactly like Amber Suede and <laughs> hard for me to not get my hands on that immediately, especially because it's in stock. Um, this looks like a really great, great line of products. The next darkest color looks a little bit warmer and then they have these two really, really rich, deep, deep contour tones, which is just amazing. I mean, this last one is probably the deepest contour color I've ever seen. So, and it's clean makeup. It's a brand that I trust. It's a formula that I know and trust and already love. So that's something that I also have my eye on that I am excited about. However, I have already have really beautiful working products for me in all of these categories. I sort of have my eye out for the cream contour and bronzer in a different formula, in a different brand, but I'm not going to purchase that until I'm out of the one that I have right now because I don't want to waste anything and I am enjoying it in the meantime. I think that's it for Sephora, except for a couple little fun, fun things. I've been really enjoying the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. I have that in vanilla beige, which is just a really nice, almost translucent color but they have it in this really fun cherry color that looks like it would just be great for summertime. So that's in my loves and I have my eye on that. The Super Goop Resetting Powder SPF, genius. I love to do really 
bronzy, shimmery, dewy makeup looks in the summertime, and then I'll go and sit by the lake and need to reapply my SPF, and that is something that is just kind of genius. So because I don't have a product that does that, I might pr be purchasing that, but I would wait until the summer months when I find myself really in need of that type of thing. I've also got the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. This is obviously cult favorite. It's been around for a long time. I've never tried it, but it seems like the type of product that is exactly what I look for in a primer. The original Fenty Beauty primer, any sort of pore filling primer, um, the e.l.f. Poreless Putty primer, anything that has that really nourishing, moisturizing feel is usually what I prefer to use as opposed to a super silicone-y, slippy, velvety feel. Um, I do have the Milk Hydro Grip right now, which I only really use if I need my makeup to last a long, long time. And if I'm trying to do just a day-to-day -day, you know, makeup with whatever skin prep I'm using, I'll just go in with extra moisturizer or I will use my Wellita. Um, it's not skin food, but it is by the Wellita skin food brand. It's their Calendula face cream and it's actually for babies and it's very nourishing. It's almost a little oily on the skin, but it, I find it, it's a really great base for makeup and it's also a great just moisturizer in general, especially when your skin is like so so dry i'll put that on sleep in it and it's like an overnight mask so i'm gonna wait on primer for now but that is one that i have my eye on and then if we hop over to the credo site which is a website i've sort of enjoyed lurking on these days credo is all clean beauty and a lot of these brands are indie um, there is a no ingredient list that is even longer than the clean at sephora ingredient list and um, a lot of these brands are already brands that I know, trust, and love. So um, a brand that they have that I have not tried is EXA. And there's a lot from EXA that looks perfect for me. Specifically, their primer looks like it's going to be very, very similar to the Silk Canvas, to the Fenty primer, um, to the e.l.f. Poreless Putty in a liquid version looks like it's right up my alley and the exact type of thing that I would be into and it's less expensive than the Tatcha. So that's the one I'm leaning toward. But again, gonna wait on that because I have a routine that I've been loving and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. The other thing by Exa that I've been sort of eyeing is their green color corrector, which is a really, it's an interesting color. Usually green color correctors are in this like pistachio shade like a very cool tone green this one is a warm olive tone green it looks beautiful i do have rosacea and um i have been inspired by hannah louise poston to incorporate a green color corrector into my routine similar to the resetting powder with the spf it's not something i have and because of that i could go ahead and purchase it but i've been even more inspired to really work on my skin lately and to focus on taming and healing some of that redness and not just covering it up. So that is in my hip pocket. It is something that looks beautiful and looks like it would be a perfect fit for my little collection. Um, but I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna continue sort of trying to heal my skin and get it to a point where maybe I never need that. It's a process. I've had rosacea for years, so we'll see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's interesting because um, it's all base products. It's primer, it's color corrector, it's bronzer, and it's blush. And who doesn't love base products? Um, but I do already have a routine that I've been starting to get the feels for. At first it was, you know, I moved into my new place and I'm organizing my makeup and I'm just setting out what I want to be using every day. And now it's just, just this sort of like threw it on, makeup on the go feel and look that I haven't had in a really long time. For a while it's been like, ooh, let me open my beauty drawer and let me choose a blush out of the 17 blushes I have. And that's felt really luxurious, but there's something really down to earth about having like three blushes to choose from and either choosing the one that you've been using all week or using all three of them. And my whole process and routine has sort of felt that way recently. And it's allowed me to get creative in a way that I really hoped I would be able to in this no buy. And I've 
come up with a couple different ways to use products that I didn't get a lot of use out of before. And I ended up layering them and really finding things that I loved and finding combinations that I loved. I've started incorporating some red lips here and there. I have a lot of red lipstick that never really sees the light of day that I've been able to celebrate and just get some beautiful, like delicious use out of. And this is the feeling that I was hoping I would achieve by not purchasing any makeup in 2023. And now here we are, March, mid-March, it's finally getting there. So stick with it, it does happen. In the beginning, you're like, this sucks. <laughs> I need things and I want things and I don't like what I have and like, what's the point? But it happens eventually, this feeling of like, oh, I can play with my makeup. It's mine, I can get my hands in it and put it on my face in new and interesting ways. And I don't have to use it the way it, you know, tells me to be used on the package or on the YouTube video. It's mine, <laughs> I bought it and it should be completely mine in its form and its usage and its ingredients and its brand. Make yourself the brand. That's what it kind of feels like. Like my makeup collection is my own little personal line of makeup. It's like a very curated makeup brand where we have these select colors and select formulas that achieve a very specific, curated, beautiful look. And instead of me sort of subscribing to any specific brand that's already doing that, I am creating my own brand with my own little personal line of stuff. And it's not something that I'm like, oh, I'm in the process of curating it. I have to go out and buy things so that I get this perfect little capsule collection which previously i might have had that mindset like oh i want the capsule collection but let me buy it first you don't have to buy it first look at your own collection the capsule is sitting there it's in there somewhere and the capsule might be the whole collection you don't have to necessarily do a declutter to get this feeling i do recommend though taking out a few products that you're like okay this is what i'm going to use the next few days or the next few weeks doing this move um, and not having a lot of storage space here. I left some of my makeup at my parents' house. I have some of my makeup put away, you know, behind a door. And then I've got my makeup that's a few different faces right in front of me every day. And it's not actually that, that capsule-y. I actually have all of my eyeshadow out on, I have like a rolling cart and my main products are on top. And the second layer is like pretty much all of my eyeshadow. And it's fun because I get to be like, ooh, what do I want to do today? Um, and I never used to be able to do that. I used to, things got lost in the shuffle. So yeah, there are a couple of different ways to do that. You can select a few things and say, this is what I'm going to use for the next week. Or you can lay it all out <laughs> and really look at what you've got and feel like you have access to this whole palette of things that you maybe don't look at because it gets lost in the back of the drawer. That kind of like sort of object permanent where you're not aware of something unless it's right in front of you. So it's kind of been a combination of that plus not buying anything, forcing myself to re-fall in love with the things that I have that has finally allowed me to achieve the beginning of this feeling. And I really look forward to it continuing to blossom as the year goes on. And you know, maybe when the time is right, adding a few very select things that I have really thought about or potentially skipping out on those altogether because my love for my collection has grown so strong. I don't know, we'll see. So thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me. Um, I look forward to updating you as the year goes on and I will see you in the next one. Bye.